Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video, doing strap watch for today's second video. So as well as on a Wednesday, we're having an in-depth look at what's going on with all of the development stratosphere-wise. And I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say that first video today was our 6am UK weather forecast. And if that wasn't enough, um, we're going to be live at 6pm. We'll be live with our 10 to 14 day out. So uh, I shall see you at 6 maybe. Please like, share, subscribe on all today's videos and content. And thank you so much everybody for doing that. Right, let's start off with the uh, situation at 10 HPA over the, over the Arctic and the North Pole. Uh, so the gray, the gray line is the trend line for this time of the year. We're almost at our coldest level now. The temperatures at 10 HPA over the North Pole. The black line shows where we've been and where we currently are with temperatures at 10 HPA in the strategy. So we've had our first minor warming. We've been documenting this, of course. Um, picking up winter updates. So we did get a minor warming occurring over Siberia that moved into Canada. Of course, a slight displacement of the polar vortex at its roots at 10 HPA. Nothing particularly significant. Um, but it has been enough to lift the black line up above average. And so we are currently around minus 65 degrees after being few days ago down to around minus 77 or minus 78 perhaps so it did get really quite cold a few days ago but now we're a little bit above average if we go a bit lower down to 30 hpa uh, there we can see that we did actually reach minus 80 a few days ago so it became very very cold uh significantly cold on average at uh at 30 hpa which is close to the troposphere of course um we're now uh, seeing a bit of a tick up at that level of the atmosphere as well so this minor warming at 10 hpa has kind of moved down to 30 hpa as well and um we're still a bit colder than average mode we're probably sitting somewhere now around minus 77 minus 76 something like that we should be around minus 74 so we're a couple of degrees colder than average but not uh, all that far from um, normal. Obviously, these warmers are not going to have any uh, direct impact on, um, on 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 blocking or weather or boat vortex, etc., etc., etc. It's just of note, you know. But at the moment, we have had a little bit of a, a warming of the stratosphere. Right, so uh, let's have a look at the uh, GFS then. So we're currently in the middle of updating between the 12Z and so the 18Z. So we'll start off with the 12Z. This is a minor warming that I've been talking about over Siberia, moving into Canada. And that has been enough over the top of the pole around here to lift the temperature up to the mid minus 60s, something like that. So as we go through the next um, few days, we keep the temperature hovering at that sort of level, actually, over the North Pole. Maybe lifting up a little bit more, actually, over the top of the pole, possibly going up to around minus uh, 60, something like that. Into the extended range with the GFS, again, we see... The temperatures are going to be hovering over the pole at around that minus, uh, mid minus 60s sort of level. And this gets all the way to the 21st of September. And these brilliant purple colours are the polar vortex, or is the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere. Those cold temperatures are essentially the PV at its roots up there in the stratospheric level. We are seeing a little bit of a secondary warm beginning to occur over Siberia there around the 21st of September. Again, that's pretty modest. It's certainly nowhere near an SSW or uh, anything like that but again just a note that there is something beginning to emerge over Siberia there on the 21st of December but basically up until that point the PV are uh, you know we, we keep those cold temperatures going albeit displaced a little bit towards the uh, North America North American Atlantic and uh, Northern European side of the Arctic and the North Pole. What these minor warmings could be doing, though, is kind of softening up the polar vortex, you know, moving it around a little bit, just niggling at it, giving it a few little punches, um, but won't do anything uh, directly. But later on, as we get further on into winter and possibly pick up a proper southern stratospheric warming event, you know, these earlier minor warmings are perhaps helping to soften up and prime the PV to be vulnerable for a significant attack a little bit later on in the winter. Remember, the further on we go through the winter, the more probable an SSW gets. We think we're going to have an SSW, as we said, in our winter forecast that released on 
uh, Sunday. Um, we think we are going to have a sudden stratospheric warming event this year, uh, this winter, due to the somewhat unusual combination of an easterly QBO with an El Nino uh, event. So that's the, that's the reasoning, if you like, behind that. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, two-week forecast with Jeff S. Let's have a look at some extended range then. So um, this is coming from ecfwf.int, and it's the 10 HPA temperature anomaly forecast for the next six weeks. So we're starting off on the 11th to the 18th of uh, December, so uh, next week, basically. And uh, still a warming taking place there from Siberia into Canada. That's the warming, so we can pick that up on here, really. So um, this is going to be... When is that? Four again, so that's the eleventh, the eighteenth. So yeah, I think you know, round here. So so that's kind of this warming here. Uh I'll highlight it. So that that's that, you know. So um I mean you can see it is actually quite a quite a modest uh and, and pretty subdued warming. But on this uh, chart it looks like that. So um not a little bit more significant than it is. Remember these are anomalies rather than a direct uh, uh, temperature forecast. So um you have to keep that in mind, you know but the anomalies perhaps look a little bit more dramatic than they are. Right, go through the, the second week, which is the 18th, 25th of December. So that warming area shrinks a little bit then. So actually it looks like the, um, as you go up towards Christmas, the uh, temperature 10 HP will probably cool a little bit, particularly on the uh, Atlantic and, and Northern European um, side of the Arctic. So a bit of a warming, though, uh, a bit warmer than average anyway, uh, over on the um, Siberian and Canadian side of the Arctic. The third week is the 25th, 5th of December to the 1st of January. So, um, that we see is quite interesting. So, there's some sort of warming begins to get going there um, over eastern parts of Europe and into the west of Russia, which is rather an unusual place to start warming off. Um, and also, this warming here around Canada looks like it's beginning to pick up. So, from, from like the second week to the third week, um, it looks like things are beginning to get a little bit more interesting there over Christmas. Uh, the fourth week looks like that, and then something really quite significant looks like it's taking place there. A widespread above average temperature all the way from North America, or, or right way over to Siberia, right way over to Russia, um, and encompassing the top of the North Pole as well. So could that be the week that we get SSW? On the temperature scale... Uh, it is going off a scale, so that's like an anomaly that's uh, 10 degrees or more above average. But, of course, have an SSW, you've got to go to 50, 50 degrees or more above average. It would be helpful, as I've said before, if these anomaly maps would uh, up the scale so we can see just how intense that's getting. It does look a little bit like an SSW, I have to say, but if it was only going to, like, 10 or 20 degrees above average, then that would not be actually an SSW. And then uh, the final week, which is the 8th to 15th of January, also looking rather SSW-esque, I have to say, with this uh, widespread area of above average temperature runs all the way from North America and Canada right the way over into uh, Russia and northern parts of Europe as well. So we'll have to wait and see until like shorter range models pick up on that if it verifies how intense that warming is getting. We can say it is going up to or over 10 degrees above average. That's as much as we can say. You know, we can't say how how far into genuine SSW territory that is going. But it looks interesting. Um, another way of looking at uh, the polar vortex is with uh, zonal winds. So this is the uh, mean zonal wind forecast, 10 HPA from uh, the ECM for the next six weeks. So we are weakening zonal winds now. Of course, we have this minor warming. It has been enough to uh, weaken the zonal wind back down to average. This thick red line is uh, is climatology. You know, it's... Um, no, actually, that's wrong, isn't it? So let me just check that again. It's like difficult to work out with these uh, uh, different lines. So I think the thick red line is, is like... Um, Climate climatology and this big blue lines the ensemble mean. Uh, so yes, we are back to around average now, and uh, we're going to see that the um, zone wind actually goes a little bit weaker than average over the next few days, but hovering close to. So let's say we're hovering very close to uh, sort of where you'd expect the strength of zone wind to be. However, as we go into the final ten days or so of, uh, of uh, December, then on into January, we see this big blue line, which should be ensemble mean dropping away. 
not yet going into reversal territory. That's be zero line just here. So, oh my one's got one key. <laughs> be zero line just here. Let's see if I can draw straight. Can I? Can you draw straight? Can you draw straight? Can you draw straight? There we go. Go. That's not bad, is it? So that zero line is um is uh where we're getting the reversal zone. I mean, anything that drops under there is like reversing uh the zone of winds out. So uh these on top of down here are going for a genuine reverse of zone of winds, probably or almost certainly by a, an SSW. I mean on top of mean um is not doing that, so it's going down to this level this level, which is around between around twenty and uh, fifteen. So uh, it looks as though going to see a significant weakening of zone of winds there at the end of December and into January but again how far we go back because it's like four five weeks away how far we go with that you know is is uncertain we can say that we have got a significant number but not a majority but a significant a minority I suppose of ensemble pre members that are going for a reverse of zone of winds there into the beginning of January and a genuine SSW. So we will wait and see how things develop and how it plays out over the uh, next, uh, you know, over the next uh, week or two. And of course, we're going to keep you updated. Uh, so there we go. That's Strat Watch for this week. We'll do it all over again next week. And we will start including stratospheric data within our 10 to 14 days as well over the uh, coming days as always. So this, just keep saying, this video is in addition to rather than in replacement of. Uh, talking of 10 to 14 there, we're going to be live with that at 6pm. So I shall see you a little bit later on for that. But for Strat Watch for this week, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.